It's so simple, but we make it so difficult. And it's these hard things, these challenges, these horrible things we see are there to urge us to be better than we are. And I think until we, we start seeing that, they will continue, no matter, on all levels. We look at our economic crisis, we look at our ecological crisis, we look at our spiritual crisis, and we say, I don't, I'm not happy, society's not happy, what's wrong with us? So that is the trigger. We have to have problems to have solutions. Problems create creativity. There's no such thing as a problem. A problem is essentially a transition. So I see the crises of today as a transition point for humanity. I see them as not necessarily something that's out of the ordinary. Again and again in nature, from the very most ancient bacteria to more recent species, they go through a juvenile phase of hostile competition to establish themselves. And then they discover the economics of cooperation. And when they find that it is cheaper and more efficient and more beneficial for everyone to feed your enemy rather than fighting them, then we are on the way to the new civilization we're all looking for. The wonderful part about nature being fractal is that we can use patterns in nature to understand other patterns that exist because patterns repeat themselves. So now if you want to look at a pattern, that's playing itself out on this planet right now that would give us insight about what is going on. So I say, look inside a caterpillar that's growing. And a caterpillar represents, let's say, seven billion cells living under the same skin. Each cell is a citizen. And guess what? They're like people like us. They're working every day. Cells in the digestive system are taking the food and breaking it down and making products out of it. Some cells are the motility cells. They're, those are the cells that move the caterpillar around. The structures of like uh, our highways with trucks and vehicles carrying materials all over the place, something like that. Cells of the immune system are taking their job of protecting the system. Respiration system is making sure fresh oxygen is being delivered. Oh, so all the cells have jobs. The caterpillar is growing. If you were in there and a reporter, you look around and go, yeah, the economy is going great guns. It's growing every day. Everybody's working, full employment. This is the kind of thing we love to see. How much are we growing every day? Some percent every day. And then the caterpillar reaches a certain stage of growth. And at that stage of growth, it just, it just stops eating. It can't take in anymore at this point. It's reaching a maximum size. Then if you're a cell inside that community, imagine what would happen. That you're on the job and all of a sudden there's less food coming in and you're a digestive cell and you say, well, man, the work is slowing down here. The factory is slowing down. Then all of a sudden it gets to such a low level that many cells get laid off of the job. Now their cell's not working. Why? There's not enough food coming in to keep them all working. And as the food shuts down, then the other jobs are affected because if there's no food, then there's no energy and all the systems start laying off cells. And pretty soon, there's massive chaos under the skin of a caterpillar. Why? The system stopped growing, the cells are out of work, nothing is evolving, and the thing is falling apart. If you were a cell in that caterpillar body at that time, you would look around and say, oh my God, our world is coming to an end. And yet, in the midst, of those billions of cells. In among them are other cells genetically identical to them. No different. But they think differently. They respond to the signals differently. These cells have the interesting name called imaginal cells. And these imaginal cells come up with new visions. And what happens is in the midst of all this chaos, when all the other cells are running around thinking the end of the world is coming, the new imaginal cells are laying out new ideas, new visions, a new plan, a new scheme, a new way of life. And around these ideas, the cells reorganize and they start to create new massive organizations to create something much more fabulous than the previous system. A system that is much more sustainable, a system with a higher level of evolution. And that system they're constructing called the butterfly. So there's a transition from an old world of caterpillar with an old belief system and an old way of life that was no longer sustainable. And therefore, you have two choices in this world right now. You can retain your caterpillar status and go, oh my God, the sky is falling, and be in fear. Or you can say, the caterpillar is going, I want to build the butterfly. 
Why? Because if I become active and you know positive in the process of building the butterfly, I'm engaged, I'm working, we're creating the future. If I sit there and bemoan the loss of the caterpillar, then I'm making myself sick and everything around me. Why? I'm not contributing to our evolution. And so, where are we? We're at the demise of the caterpillar stage of civilization and the rise of the butterfly. What we have to recognize is that uh, all this crisis, etc., is not outside of consciousness. Mm -hmm. It is also inside of consciousness. Mm -hmm. there, there, is a, there is a plan to this madness. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we look at biological evolution, all uh, big evolution is preceded by a catastrophe. So uh, this is evolution of the human being that is going on right now. From being overly concerned with the negative emotions and the rational mind to listen to the values, love, beauty, justice, truth, goodness. We need to hear that. But how do we hear that without the pangs of suffering? <laughs>